when Ty, because uh, he owns the account, gets a message that says all the uploads are done, he'll tell me and I'll be able to tell you. Or I guess he could probably tell you directly since, you know, he's seen your Twitter and everything. Probably got to be like a 10 minute, just, you know, five, 10 minute wait just tell everything yeah, answers up. But you'll also get a ding and, you know, you'll also get a notification on your side saying, oh, yeah, yeah. So you close it ahead of time. That one file is like 50 50, the whole thing's gone. Sometimes you get lucky, but. Yeah. All right, so leave it open until it's done. When I'm when yeah. we're done, yeah, Perfect. it'll be a little pause, and you'll you'll see it. It's it, 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 obvious unless it's not, in which case then you just you know it's a pain in the ass. Yeah. Okay. I just. Uh, oh, so uh, uh, do you have a specific uh, uh, subject about it? Uh, uh, like like how, how tight or or why do you want the focus of the debate to be? Do you know I? That's what I was wondering where you guys are coming from because I'm fairly open and I can discuss the very deep philosophical end which you might not even be able to go towards or something more political or ethical or um yeah. or literary i think you do a lot of literary um you yeah. know discussion yeah I, I i like to find ways that like people have typically went and 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 made their art political in some kind of obtuse way and then kind of pull apart what they were maybe trying to say with it um and and that and that's just like my hobby basically but 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 you know this is this is where I like to actually talk about my politics and on on the ag actual podcast. So so that's why I wanted you on here instead of like doing something on my channel. And I and just for the sake of you know the conversation, I'm gonna do my best. I kind of want to just I'm gonna let y'all have that facilitate and you know kind of direct traffic, make sure it's a you know worthwhile conversation to have. But wherever you guys want to take it, I'll just kind of do my best you know as neutral as possible third party and kind of make sure everyone's getting fully heard getting to articulate well and that you know things aren't being mischaracterized um what what, what is it i know that I, I caught you know just little snippets that andrew had passed on what seems to be the crux of where where on just fan of ayn rand not a fan of ayn rand um so oh go ahead oh so 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 where where, where i've come from uh uh I, I think that a lot of Ayn Rand's politi political and philosophical positions are very concrete and they make sense as like a structured system and, it, and it's all very logical and flows from the first principles that she has. In my opinion, it's, the, it's like the, 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 essentially the principle of a lot of it is based off the, the rational self-interest and selfishness as a, a human, as a component of human action and that and that she considers trying to deny that selfishness an immoral act. And, and to me, that, that piece of the philosophy kind of is bad and corrupts the rest of it. And so that's kind of where I focused my critique in the video that you saw. Oh, okay, that, that's an excellent jumping off point. That's a very sort of philosophically deep area to go. But what do you think is the source of values if it is not a person's valuing their own self? Um, the, uh, I mean, functionally, when a person makes value judgments about another person's well-being or whatever, they are using their own self and their own well-being as kind of a model for that. But it, but once they've done that, it's very easy to hop off that person. Oh, I can identify with that person into a third person, into a fourth and fifth and sixth. And so, even though you might be the original like model of how you know you you can identify your own well-being first, it's very easy to then like project or empathize with somebody else's situation, even when it's different from your own. Uh, well, if Ayn Rand proposes that a person caring about themselves is the source of values, and you disagree with that, then what do you propose as the source of values? Oh, no, no. I'm, I'm saying that if I agree that that's the source, like people use that as their initial blueprint, I'm saying that in, in a well-rationed moral system, that is the way that just the human mind develops. They first care about themselves, and then they're able to emphasize with others, even if it's not based on their own experiences and their own value. Does that make sense? Okay, so let me just let you in on a little secret. People don't die of starvation on the street in the United States, but they do in North Korea. Now, that, that, is not uh, because, I, that is not because free people have no empathy, all right? It's because free people do have empathy. You don't have any empathy when you're in chains. The people in Russia that saw people being marched to the gulags did nothing because they themselves weren't free. 
Wait, you know that people die on, of starvation in the United States like a lot, right? Never. They never die of starvation in the United States. Uh, is that a serious statement you're making there? Because that's, that's, that's absurd. That, 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 that's verifiably false. I'll, I'll pull up data for you. Um, what, some old guy on the street? No, no like... Who has cirrhosis you know, of the liver and... old guy on the street, that would be so... And he has cirrhosis uh -huh. of the liver and he's been homeless for 20 years? And, and then he starves to death as opposed to dying of cirrhosis or, or whatever other disease he has. Yes. He didn't have to starve. He could have he could have gotten food anywhere. There's plenty of food in America. Plenty and of food. plenty of it gets thrown directly into landfills. Like, yeah, exactly. We don't have any problem with food shortages in America. Nobody dies of a food shortage in America. They, they die because their parents lock them in a basement and starve them to death, maybe. Something like that. But no food shortages in America. Now, 37 million people uh, uh, currently experience food scarcity where they miss one or more meals a day. Um, so, and, and there being sufficient food in America, I, it's a different claim than people have sufficient access and are able to obtain sufficient food. And, and, and equally, even if people aren't literally starving to death, they can get like maybe one meal a day, one meal every other day, and they're like hanging in there. People still start die of exposure because even though there are 10 times more uh, personless homes than homeless people, people are still left on the street to die. Like there isn't enough charity to actually make up for the amount of harm being done in, in our society. Harm being done by who? We inherited poverty. Poverty has always been I mean, with us. The question is, how much wealth is there? Look, there's well, the always been poor the people. For a decent part of that, like, uh, the, you should look up homeless encampment evictions, because they're some of the most brutal police actions, and they happen every fucking day. Yeah, and and that's because the state is so involved in housing. Oh, and if we could get the oh. state out of the involvement in housing, there would be more and cheaper housing available. So you know that I'm an anarchist, right? Right. That's like my where I'm coming from. Well, the thing so, about so an, the, the thing about anarchists is that they're statists, except they don't really know they're statists. <laughs> I mean, so what I want is the the like you know if if I agree with Ty to do a podcast and then we're busy you know every day of the month for three months in a row, did we really want to do a podcast? Well, maybe maybe we do a podcast after that. Well. We're still, the, the process of finding when we can record and do this is still a governing body between the two of us, but it's voluntary and it's, and it's you know, it's just in, in, in a sense. And so even if I'm fine with people governing themselves and creating a sort of government that they all agree to, that doesn't make me in favor of the state because I want there to be no violence for realsies. I want the I want the, the function of law enforcement to be actually protecting and actually serving the people as opposed to protecting property and serving very, very wealthy people only. Oh, well, there's no difference between protecting people and protecting property. And when you say protecting the wealthy, you know, the wealthy don't use very much of their wealth. Most of it serves the people. So, like, if you, you say so-and-so has $43 billion, yeah, but he actually just lives in a house that's worth $100 million. And uh, he eats regular food. He does not actually consume forty-three billion dollars. That money is uh, distributed yeah, across the United the States in the form of warehouses and trucks that serve the people. But then the next guy over has a fucking yacht that costs two hundred million dollars to buy and fucking a million dollars a year to fuel. Like, yeah, of course, like, because but he's but he spends that money because he has 500 million sitting in the bank and he's already spent another 500 million on houses and yachts and he doesn't need to buy any more houses and yachts he's got enough of them now real quick i, I think i have done the this number of yachts that one trip. person should own is none yachts uh well okay so you're gonna you're gonna put out of work i want you to i want to i want you to what about all those people that make yachts? If you make a yacht, you're just automatically out because what? That's not essential? To be fair, you could still be a shipwright for another kind of ship. And again, I, I was I was just being like a, a – that was a facetious joke. Yacht, yachts are fine as they, uh, but, but, yachts are fine to exist. Crappy, you, you equated the function of protecting property and protecting people. I, I, have, a, I have a hunch that a – I'm sorry, down. you were breaking up on my end? Yeah, breaking up here, too. Oop, how, am, am I better now? You are right now, yeah. Okay, let me know if it happens again. Um, in protecting property and protecting people, Crapper, you said that's one and the same. 
it seems like a lot of it, as we talk about values, particularly as and, and that 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 bifurcation is, is going to be where a lot of you know we'll just end up talking past each other here. Can you expound why you think that those are equivalent uh, yeah. functions for for, for a police yeah, force? That, that's, to serve? that's a that's yeah. a really good thing to ask. Yeah. What if? Fun. Okay. Well, just imagine this. Tomorrow, we you guys are in charge. You become king, and tomorrow you say we no longer protect property. We only protect people. And a mob comes and they break my door down and they steal everything in my house and they don't touch me. And my life savings and my safe and everything is gone. And I call the police and they say, did they hurt you? No. Well, then what are you uh, crying about? Uh, th th See, thanks for pointing that out. Though. My life is nothing without my property. I would commit suicide so, if all my property were gone in the next minute. I, 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 uh, I mean, in, in, on the free market... Insurance does exist, so you could you could get a lot of it replaced. I mean, for the for for you know, it. But there's still sentimental value that's lost. But one of the things that that's really important about the anarchist thought is the difference between private property and personal property. If somebody breaks down your door and takes your private or your your personal property, then that is a problem. That is attacking the person. But private property is when something has been taken by a person who couldn't possibly use the land themselves. Like, you know, the, uh, the, the legend about how Pennsylvania was founded, that it used to be that you couldn't take a parcel of land that was bigger than you could run in a day. Well, okay. Um, as long as I get to be the judge of that. And maybe, um, maybe what I want is to keep a forest for, uh, deer and mosquitoes to run free. And so I'm going to need a million acres. So I'm going to cap it at 1 million acres per person. Okay. Well, the that would be something that the community as a whole would decide how. Like, okay, I'm out then. If I if I can't decide that myself, I'm out. I don't want to decide that with the community. I I don't also, trust them. Also, additionally, the the way that's that 100 private, million acres is a deal breaker. I mean, just, well, just clarifying. I thought he just said, didn't you just say one million? All right, make oh, it a hundred. Make it a hundred million. Oh, that's it. Uh, you just you know. The, 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 the thing about it is that, like, if you want that for hunting as an like a, as a space that isn't ever going to get developed, that is something that, like, anybody could go in and hunt there because it's such a huge area and you'd never even know the difference. And so, like, like in, doing what's called enclosure, which is how the agrarian movements, like, became industrial civilizations, is turning like the commons things that just nobody owned into private property and denying access to the property to the poor and that is what created the urban poor like we know it today because they used to just be able to say you know what fuck this i'm gonna go and hunt and fucking gather and maybe start a farm somewhere and and then they try to do that and fucking cops fucking break their kneecaps and shove them back on the street because some fucking lord said hey actually this entire gigantic fucking forest is mine and anybody who's in in here uh is a fucking criminal now and that's and that's how it happened that's how we get like you said poverty's always been with us but like what we understand today as poverty where people don't have jobs and are hungry and starving and maybe homeless because of that that didn't used to exist people used to just be able to go into the fucking countryside and fucking figure this shit out but all of those skills have been fucking lost because of enclosure and that's like a huge like like a like a historical crime that has been to all done to all of humanity through just the existence and process of capitalism and not any individual person's crimes well so let me ask you a question they get to it but i'd like you to incorporate is there, from, from your perspective, it, how do you rational? You're breaking up. Fuck. Um, sorry. How do, you, how, how do you rationalize the difference between pre-existing society? Or, you, you know, you hit a streak of bad luck in the big city. You go out to the fucking countryside, and it may not be a great life, but you can, you know, catch. He's like, there, there is an alternative you know, in a different, you know, a, a more subsistence kind of form of poverty, whereas now in major urban areas, or at least, you know, with suburban sprawl, that other layer has been totally removed by the exposure that Andrew was referring to, taken to the nth degree in our modern society. In, in, in your line of thinking, is there any... Is there any what? Questions? Say again. Is there, is, there, is there any is there any room coming from Cropper's perspective to to acknowledge that 
the modern world does present a different set of conditions. And so some of that education that may have. You're breaking up again. Some worked. of the. <laughs> it sounded like you said fuck, but you broke it up again. Oh, yeah, I did say fuck. I don't know why. Okay, well, let me, I can answer your question. You are breaking up really bad, though. It's killing us here. Um, you, uh, we are in immensely, immensely improved conditions. A person who hits rock bottom in the modern society might lose their apartment, right? But a person who hits rock bottom in a hunter-gatherer society is going to die. There's no extra food. There's no extra wealth. There's no relatives to go with live with there's there's nothing you're you're done and gone if you can't find enough food for yourself in a hunter-gatherer society but I mean, and there were true for homeless people nowadays right in the united states of america homeless people are immensely wealthy i mean except for the part where they still can freeze to death and on the street right because that happens every every winter oh and it's on the news and they send 20 or 40 or 70 people out walking the streets in downtown to look for people on cold freeze nights okay that's that's and, america that's freezing to death spend, in america and they also spend the the two weeks prior to the the two weeks prior to the coldest month of the year breaking up homeless encampments where they had like places where they could be warm together ex and then they get fucking violently repressed by people who don't want them on private land because private property is a crime yeah, well, if you want them to encroach on private land and private property, go to California and see how that's working out. That's not a... Actually, the California is very, very mean to its homeless people. That's like me and Ty are both from California. It, it lets them poop on the street and live on the street. Nope. They will get put in prison for that kind of activity. Well, then why well, do they... It's really harsh on it while leaving no other no other option. It's a, yeah. a, There's an there's a, a absolute there's... dearth of public infrastructure. Well, I have a friend that lives in downtown San Francisco, and she said she passed 17 human poops walking her dog the other day. I, I, I will actually argue that San Francisco is a exception to the rule because it does have some uh, historically, like, very lax laws, especially during the Reagan era when they started just basically turning it into a, uh, like, a, a libertarian, like, uh, what's it called for tech bros and stuff? Uh, safe haven for tech bros. And libertarian startups like that, they they got super lax, lax on criminal criminal stuff in San Francisco alone. But San Francisco is like one percent of California's total pop, eh, one three percent of California's total population. And there's no problems like that anywhere else in California. I'm saying that where I'm from, and also where my dad lives in San Diego, and I'm from Modesto, um, and also where my mom's family lives in San Bernardino, and like. Just every, like, my family, and we're embedded all over California, and I haven't seen anywhere bes anywhere that's nice to homeless people, and I haven't seen anywhere besides San Francisco that is decent to homeless people. Like, there are signs up that say, lusted for vagrancy and charged this amount of time or two years in prison if you're here between this and this hour. Like, and, like, there are cops all over the fucking place, like... Yeah. I think if we're going to look at the California like that, that's population, that's just my lived experience. You, but you've also got to acknowledge, like, part of the draw. It, it you know, it may not be, it may not be the most draconian, but they, they sure as fuck are not permissive with, with the home with, with un unhoused people in this state. But most of the state of California, you are wildly less likely to freeze to death on any given night between October and February, and so there is a lot of a be unhoused. I mean, I'd run to one of the coasts too. So I, I think that if we're just being honest, there is, there is a degree to which there's a, a at least recognizable yeah. factor where that it's not just policy and not just social arrangement, where it is just a, if you gotta live homeless, the, 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 the median temperature is 64 degrees year round. But yeah. so, so, I mean, from your yeah. perspective, how do you deal with that? Is that just a, we go, and if you're found to be yeah. propolis and not able to not be a nuisance, we just need to put you away and, and force you to be productive somewhere else, or or what's... Well, the, the root of the problem in California is the state controls on your economy, and if you would uh, get the state out of the economy, then there would be enough housing for all those people. I mean, shit, 30 million people, that's nothing. There are 30 million people in cities in China. 30 million people is nothing to have spread out over the size of California. Yeah, but, you know, the, in China, the state manages housing, so nobody goes homeless there. Oh, bullshit. China's a mess. 
Of course people go ho ho homeless there. People, shit, they kill 60,000 people a year for their organs. Jesus Christ. And they have, they have hundreds of thousands of apartments that are empty. Well, yeah, that's because they... That's be, future population growth, of so they don't... Right? Because of a housing bubble created by communist... Wait, no, we have tens of millions of houses empty because of a housing bubble created by capitalists, so we're well, 10 yeah, times... No, no, exactly, the only of those being them. used for actual no, 300, because they've got three times as many people as us. They have ghost cities. They have whole cities that are empty. Whole cities. That's... Okay, that's for one, that sounds like a really rad urban uh, exploration thing. No, just do, just do it? look it up. China's ghost cities. China's ghost. Go to YouTube and check it out. They build cities. It can pre-plan them before they need to expand into them. And so for a large part, those are intentional. Energy. No, they are not because they are falling to pieces because they're made in China and they're trash. Nobody's ever lived them and nobody ever will. And the paint and plaster are falling off. Also, like, why, 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 why would those be built? Like, I don't because understand. communists can't handle money. They don't know what to do with it. I mean, that in the Soviet Union was the second largest economy in the world until they collapsed, and now no, China they weren't. They were a tiny economy. economy. They were and never a powerful economy. What? Soviet Union was really? never a powerful economy. Never. And you look at the well, look I mean, at their <laughs> look at their steel manufacturing in 1990 when they shut everything down. Half of their steel plants in 1990 I mean, had been given to them by the United States in World War II. I mean, that's 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 fine. Like, but that doesn't disprove the point that that actually helps the point. Like, they got a leg up because of the United States of America and became the second. Like, you could have crafted that point to be better. They got to where they were because of America's help. No, okay, here's what I, here's how I see the Cold War. We didn't have to fight the Cold War, except the left in America kept funneling money to Russia. The left was constantly giving what? money to Russia. I think that's a no, little bit backwards, right? Eh? In America, literally was funding money to not organizations all over the world like fascist yes we built nazi germany Guatemala, Honduras, venezuela colombia chile peru fucking propaganda due in italy uh fucking uh whatever the okay uh, projects okay uh, fucking brother project to propaganda due in belgium we got indonesia we got Sri Lanka, we got fucking Bangladesh, we got Pakistan, we got India. We, you know, the list goes on of all the right wing places that, that America propped up, but it was the yeah. left wing that was funneling money to the to the Soviet Union? No, the, the government of America shifted right because the capitalists who had just come out of fucking World War II making a ton of money were afraid of a, a, a prosperous Soviet Union convincing the working class of America to turn into communists. And that's why, like, within five years of the the World War II ending, that we had a red scare to, to root out all of the, like, people who had left-wing values in the government. Like, getting to subvert the government, they were just doing their fucking jobs. Like, uh, Oppenheimer, or one of his in American history, got his shit revoked by the state because he personally was a communist, even though he was like repeatedly found in trials to be 100% loyal to the United States because he just had the communist vest. So it's the right wing that was historically the aggressors in all of these, um, in all of, the, in all, like the, the, the Soviet Union had 20,000 able-bodied men at the end of, um, the, at the end of World War II, we didn't have to do that fight. And it was the right wing that controlled the state in America that happened. And like, Thinking otherwise is you've been fed propaganda and you and you accidentally ate it. I'm sorry. Yeah, the Soviet Union's never produced anything. They're the most incompetent people in the history of the world. And uh, except for the Kalashnikov, which is the best rifle ever made. So I'm sorry for that. And so they have one one. You can't, you can't argue. They have one guy who ind who independently invents one rifle, and that's amazing to you, huh? Well, what about their MiG fighter plane? I mean, you know where they got the engine for the MiG fighter plane? And do you know how long the MiG fighter plane held supremacy in Korea? For two weeks. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be really honest, I. 
going to be really honest, Ty, I definitely wish that Brent was here because Brent knows everything about, about MIGs. So it would have been nice for her. Well, they got the engine for the MIG from Rolls Royce. They got the engine for the MIG from Rolls Royce in Britain. Yeah. Okay. And the, the, yeah. They've never I produced the private industry. They've never produced anything. I, I don't They are incompetent. I don't, I don't, I don't, we're want to get in like, yeah, because I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't defend the Soviet Union. They're idiots. Yeah. They, r- they fell apart because they let a bunch of fucking capitalist liberal infiltrators into their fucking higher rank. Wrong. It, wrong. They fell apart because they let the left can take control of their culture. If you go to the 1800s, you'll find a bunch of brilliant poets and authors and, and very, very robust intellectual culture. And they put all those people in prison and killed them. Um, I mean... To be fair, a lot of them were fucking child molesters, so. <laughs> um, yeah, and they, the, and the left. It's a shame to me that they didn't get Nabokov. And the left certainly doesn't do any of that, do they? They don't sexualize kids, do they? Oh, please. I, I mean, what I don't. Fuck? Drag queen yeah, hour? I, I, drag queen I, hour at the library? Having, having people in glamorous clothes in front of children is no more sexual than people, like, simulating sex on billboards in front of children, and that's a capitalist free market thing. All right, now like, we know where you stand sex- on, on gay 40-year-old men touching children. Uh... You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to show me one fucking image of a gay 40-year-old man touching a child in public in a way that would be inappropriate for an adult who is acting as a carer to touch a child. No conservative parent like, would let their kids do it. Yeah, that's because conservatives are them. fucking idiots. And I, you're, and like, you're a fucking libertarian. You shouldn't agree with that. I doubt, I doubt that the parents were even there. It was probably done without parental inform, information or consent. Based, based on what? What, 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 yeah. what insight do you have to this, this occurrence that yeah. makes you believe that that's not... I live in the same. I live in the same nation as Democrats. That's my insight. They're dirty, <laughs> dirty people. I mean, yeah, like, like fucking blue mag is the worst thing in the fucking world. Like, I, I, I will shit on like, like straight ticket Democrat voters. Finally, we found our common ground. Fuck Nancy Pelosi. Fuck her. Obama committed treason. He should be tried and hanged. Yeah, like every fair, other U.S. fucking president. I mean, every all single U.S. Work. president has committed treason. So. Mm, no, just Obama. Gonna expand just, on that, or just keep throwing those no, kind of things out? Yeah, he tried to conspire with a foreign government to take down a presidential election. That's treason. Oh God, are, we doing Obama, do are we doing Obama? Are we doing Obama again? Are you fucking kidding me? Wait, 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 wait. No, it's fine. Let, let's let's. Let, why not? Like literally, also Nixon doing it, like trying to to subvert the election. Like at least Nixon also, right? Uh, they subverted Nixon. What? What? Nixon. He was Nixon. framed. What? He was framed. Nixon stepped, Nixon stepped down because he knew he he wasn't framed, and like, 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 holy shit! All right. It was just a little robbery. They pushed him out because of a little robbery. They do ten times worse than that every day. I we'll agree with true. that part, but it doesn't negate the other. Yeah. Uh, I what I what I uh, by the way I'm having a wonderful time. So uh, uh just. <laughs> yeah, this is fun. Yeah. Happy Memorial Day. We have these freedoms oh. because of uh, the United States of America spending its purse on freedom. Don't forget to say thank you for your service to me uh, for serving eight years in the United States Navy. Oh, as I've heard from my friends, you were a slave then to the Navy for eight years. That is that is actually correct. I decided I realized how horrible statism was wrong, like probably a month after I signed my reenlistment contract for my second four years. I was just like... Oh fuck! There's no way out of this that doesn't end up with me in jail or me just being a fucking slave for four years. So. Yeah. So we have, uh, yeah, we have people like you to thank. I, I, you know, armies used to run in uniform who who fight for our freedom by killing brown people overseas and protecting oil profits. Oh hell, we've killed white people too. How many Germans did we kill? Um. Uh, I, I, don't have, I don't have those numbers in front of me. Yeah, we're, we're equal opportunity killers. We'll kill Germans, Italians, you name it. Anybody yeah, who if we zoom out, you know, a century. Jabs. Anybody who threatens the bottom line. Our lifetimes, then like, like, think about the number excuse. of right-wing uh, terrorist groups that we've uh, funded in Europe to, to you know... To, okay, to, re- uh, to return to that point, 
We fund every single group in the world because we are the ones with the money, okay? We built Nazi Germany. We built Saudi Arabia. We built Saddam Hussein. We built Al-Qaeda. I, I do also suggest that maybe we be a little bit more discerning on who we're building. Maybe check out what they're saying <laughs> before we give them a ton of money and guns and shit. Like, it, well, does, it does stand to reason that we don't want to maybe, you know, give, give Al-Qaeda a bunch of money to fight the fucking Soviets in Afghanistan at, over a fucking grudge because we considered them responsible for Vietnam. When the when we got a the ass kicked out of us by a bunch of fucking rice farmers. Like. Okay, I have I have a way to do that. We have to reduce America, the government's income, to tariffs. The only wait, income you know, that you not know how modern monetary policy works. Yeah, we've got to go back to the gold standard, and reduce our income to tariffs, and that'll do away with this funding foreign wars. It'll do away with funding. Do away with funding the welfare state too. Wait, wait. Can I can I ask you a question? How many wars were fought before we got rid of the gold standard? Zero, Andrew. No wars ever. We we hey, cut hey, down on America ground. Tyler, fucking. Uh, wait, is your name Ty or Tyler? Either. Oh, okay. Uh, 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 t t Tyler, left wing, not uh, uh, liberal. Uh, I don't care. Uh, uh, you are supposed to be a moderator. Do not jump in on that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Um, I apologize. Anyway. I could not help myself. Okay. Sorry. Yes. No, I, I think that the, the realistically, modern mo monetary policy is the only rea like responsible reaction to like having an economy so large, gold can no longer be like a standard for the money. Of right? course it because can. Why, why, it now, wait. Run, why can't gold be the standard wait, anymore? It's because there are more people and more, and there is more demand than can be accommodated by the amount of gold that exists. That's not and true. If we try to split up the gold. That... Wait, wait, wait. And if we try to split up the gold, read enough units that it reflects the 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 economy as we have it. As soon as there's a boom or a bust, that won't be the right amount of gold anymore, and it's not agile enough as something to back a currency to respond to the economic necessities of a capitalist structure. Well, that's if you wanted a myth. to go back to a gold standard, you would have half capital. That's just a myth. That's just garbage. Look, we can use the amount of gold we have right now to represent the world economy. It would just... And, and I'm saying that that is possible. The value would just be and deflated. Bust, the... There's no... Yes, there's... But then when you had a bust, people would make a run on gold, and then you wouldn't have any fucking gold to back... Anymore. And so, what do you do? Your money's worthless because all the people have the gold, right? <laughs> no. So, what would happen if we use gold for the standard and there wasn't enough? Is silver would come into use as a secondary metal, right? I mean, that's what that's what and the whole history of the world was. It was why? gold primary, silver secondary, and copper tertiary. Until, except then. The fucking Spaniards found so much gold in Bolivia that they crashed the world's economy. Oh, they raised and prices in Europe by 6% over 100 years. 6%. Now, in an economy that's growing, there's deflation. Deflation is what's healthy in an economy that's growing. You guys take control of the gold and print a bunch of paper in order to stimulate the economy, and what it does is destroys savings. It destroys anything that we would keep for the future. And you, think about it. Like, in, in the 1800s, you didn't try to spend your money as quick as possible because you knew next year things would get cheaper. That plow you wanted from John Deere was $48. Next year it's going to be $42. And the year after that it's going to be $38. And the Model T that you want, that's 800 Now it's 700 Now it's 600 Now it's 500 that's what should happen in a normal economy. Prices should drop over time, and that forces people to hold on to their money because they know they'll get a better price next year. How do you explain the, the growth in the price of insulin, then? It's gone up by 3,000% the cost per... Everything has gone up in like price. Dramatically. Everything stopped... No, no, like, okay, inflation dates to 1913. 
Before 1900, we were in a deflationary economy for more than 100 years. That's when the Fed took over. Yeah, here, let me, um, let me, uh, oh my god, is this the biggest fucking one they have? Oh, cool, it got bigger. Let me find my clipper. I'm going to send you the, the chart because, like, you're saying that everything got got bigger, but actually some things like consumer electronics actually got generally cheaper. I think oil by, by, by like, cost of inflation is actually right along the zero line. Hospital stuff is, it didn't get any more expensive. It, it's about as expensive as it used to be. But, but the things like insulin, which have gotten cheaper to make, oh, wait, the phone? Oh, that's because the government's involved in insurance and health care, which it shouldn't be. But look, it takes the same amount. It takes uninvolved as possible. It takes the same amount of gold to buy a house now as it did a hundred years ago. So the price of gold hasn't gone anywhere. It's remained absolutely absolutely constant. Sure. Disprove what I mean about it not being like that. Actually, proves what I'm saying about it being an inflexible method for, for the modern economies. No, that means it is the definition of money. If it maintains its value over 100 years, then it's the definition of money. Or that people value it the same amount in any economy, not that it, like, not that it is, is differently valued. Well, if you so think that, that, that that's... the value store criteria, how do you... You're, you're, both, you're both asserting different things about the fungibility of it both in yeah. like literal spendability and in the flexibility of yeah. a varying scale. Cropper, how do you, can you address that second part there? Because I think, you know, as a story of value, you can't, that, no, no, con the other qualities of money, I think, or what's being disputed. Well, you don't have to have gold or use gold for it to be the standard of value. You never have to see a gold coin in your life for it to be the basis of the economy. Yeah, so then why does it have to be a gold instead of the, 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 the modern monetary okay. unit? Okay, well, let me clue you into something. Money is gold, and paper is not. And that's why paper goes up in value over time, or down in value over time, but gold doesn't. And that's why um, 10 or 12 ounces of gold would buy you, a, you know, a, a house 100 years ago, and today it would take 10 or 12 ounces of gold to buy you a house or whatever it is. It would actually be like 100 ounces or whatever. But, but 100 years ago, you could buy a house for 10000 Now it would cost you four or $500,000. But the amount of gold that it takes has stayed absolutely level. And that, that's true even for an hour of man's labor. Everything has remained stable for more than 100 years, way over 100 years in the price of gold. So the gold... Also, if you're planning on investing in gold, forget about it because it doesn't go up or down in value. You can only make money on investing in gold if you catch it in a swing when it's undervalued by the market. And it's a very temporary it's small it's swing. undervalued by the market, isn't that just its value? Uh, yeah, when the, when, the markets, when the market as a whole values it less, you should buy it because you know that it's going to swing upwards because it doesn't lose value. And when the, when the price of gold is going quite high, realize that it's not going to go very much higher because it doesn't. It looks like it, it, it fluctuates by about 50% uh, between $1,000 and $2,000 per ounce which is a pretty huge amount of fluctuation over 10 years. Well, com like, compare that to the swing in platinum. It's nothing. And, and uh, put you know, it, platinum's on this like same chart. It's, it's reflecting basically the same. All of, all of the, all of the like markets, like silver actually seems to be the most resilient actually out of the, the silver, uh, gold, platinum, triple. And put it out over 100 years, and you see that you can't make money by investing in gold, uh, except in little short-term blips. Could you send me the 100-year chart that you're looking at? Um, I don't have a 100-year chart that I'm looking at. I'm just familiar with the history oh, of so gold. This is just a truism? This is a truism about gold well, and I've, economics, yeah. Yes. I mean, I've, I've been, like, the, one of the things that left, like, led me, like, away from libertarianism is how absurd the concept of a gold standard is like you and, and I'm, I'm sorry that like something that you, you clearly have an investment in is something that I'm calling absurd but like one of the big things about like about the economy is that people aren't rational actors and so 
the way that the economy works isn't rational. And so when somebody gets scared, they're going to want to take their money out of the bank in cash form or take their money out of their retirement accounts or whatever into their savings or whatever to reduce the, uh, the amount of risk. And so what's going to happen if you have a run in a gold standard economy, and this is what happens every time in history that there was a run in a, a like during a panic or a, a depression, uh, uh, is that the banks ran out of gold and then they ran out of cash and then they and then the fucking economy in the local area collapsed because they didn't have anything at all, right? But then when they got rid of the gold, oftentimes they were able to like manage better by like creating wait times to, to go and have like a regional branch send them more cash. But a regional branch sending them more gold might not be possible because the because the regional branch like might have gotten run on gold and they can't just ask the treasury for more gold and if they you know and it, and it just goes up the chain where well you're not giving me any anxiety analyzing our banking system in modern america i don't really care about that because in a free economy we wouldn't have all of this garbage so but we had a free economy like 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 a, a completely free, unregulated economy, like coming out of the 1800s. Yeah. Now, in the in the 1800s, there was not a great anxiety to put your money into the bank because your money would grow in value over time if it sat under your mattress. But so then also, we had postal savings for a good portion of that time, so people could just go to their post office and have their stuff kept there. And then we got rid of that in the early 1900s. Right. So the point is that. Banking was not an utter necessity to people in the 1800s. In fact, it was an inconvenience. And you say that there were banking runs. So once in a while, people went to take their money out of these places where they kept it for a convenience. Now, today we keep our savings and stuff in banks, and we think that they should be secured by the government and so on. In the 1800s, they had no illusions about that. You kept your money safe at home, and it grew in value because the economy got more powerful Okay, over so there time were runs on the, there were runs on the banks in 37 57 18 73 93 07 1907 sorry those yeah. were 18 until 1907 yeah uh 93 73 and 30 no those okay were the same ones again. okay and uh, fact so and factor all those in and we had double the growth that we had in the 1900s well yeah because the, the 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 capitalists expect a, a permanent increase in the rate at which their industries expand like, here's why here's why because if the value of your money is going to increase next year, then you save it. We don't have an infinite planet, and it, so it cannot always gain. It cannot always gain value until we can, uh, rel and we can't expect it to until we can reliably colonize other worlds. And since no, we can't no, 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 come on, pretend like it will always increase in value. It, now, in the 1800s, in the United States of America, it increased in value every year because more factories opened. And better factories, more improvements to the old factories, new designs, better designs were coming out all the time. Lots of labor being done, yep. Yeah, exactly. Lots of intellectual labor being done to create the and new designs. For both times. Oh, thank you very much. Ty, you are a – you got the, the, the trends. Oh, wow. Uh, is this adjusted for infl inflation, do you know, Ty? You can toggle. Uh, up at the oh, top, you, you can toggle and also take it off the log scale. Um, oof. Basic – oof. 1800s and you know just the year 2000 you see swings from between two three hundred dollars an ounce all the way up to twenty two hundred dollars an ounce yeah it, inflation like, adjusted terms you take the inflation adjustment off a relatively flat slow growing line through the early 70s yeah. you see it just a, a exponential kind of function growth yeah. thing on a larger scale coming Aughts, and we're basically at the top, you know, top of a U shape after that. So, there appear to yeah. be appreciable swings on a pretty regular that at times do and at times don't correspond neatly with uh, recession periods. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I would actually like genuinely argue that um, one of the reasons why we've seen a rise in the growth of the price of commodities like gold is that um uh is that like they've been aggressively advertised as these incredibly stable things but we don't see that like that translating into a historical record 
they say it on the advertisement and then you try to let to not question it but you see the data and it doesn't back it up well the price of gold's not going up or down it's gonna stay level right where it has been but it, it hasn't stayed level did you click the link that Ty provided in the in the Zencaster well that just that just shows you the value of dollars falling erratically over time but that's an unfalsifiable point because no, 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 because they're not linked anymore, right? Like people, there's more demand for gold during these periods, and so the, the price goes up for gold, or less demand, so the price goes back down. But that's not that's not what's going on. To, like, to be fair, it becomes much more erratic once it's decoupled. When it is coupled, it does stay more even, and obviously the biggest variance there is right around the grid. To that yeah. point, I mean, you see the, it in the shape of it, you know, I mean, especially the inflation-adjusted one, um, that that does seem to kind of correspond. Yeah, just it's a speculative commodity in the latter half of this chart, whereas the first it was being used to tie it to a currency. So, uh, I would well, like to hear uh, one of the things that I think Andrew alluded to, but that that I also coming out of a similar, you know, I've passed through a very free market phase on my way, you know, leftward, uh, and I think that a lot of the principles, if the caveat was. System not bounded by limits of resource or, you know, uh, the, the time we have left until the, the world, you know, boils. Uh, makes sense on a long enough timeline. These market corrections could take place. I, I don't find it entirely persuasive, but I find it much less problematic. Yeah. Or resource limitations, because even to what you were saying about the, the expansion in the 1900s, um, I'm sorry, yeah, in the 19th century, in American expansion, we had this vast, untapped, you know, wealth of natural resources that we hadn't fully settled and, and taken advantage of. So, yeah, those, those, I, those principles, I think, can hold a lot truer when you're looking at, at the limiting factor in your exploitation being the manpower and the infrastructure. But when you, when, if you acknowledge a limit on systems as a whole, all kinds of... Or do they? How do you, how do you sort out that, that tension? You can't, there's no limits on systems. Um, r right now we're running out of oil and blah, blah, blah. Oh, wait a minute, fracking. Oh, oil sands. We have a 300 year supply of oil just in Alberta, Canada from oil sands. We have a 1,000 year supply of hydrocarbons from the fracking that's been av made available just in the last 10 or 15 years this technology's been developed. And here are these huge swaths of South Dakota that were absolutely useless except to let a few cows go out and eat the grass are now selling for millions of dollars because underneath it is a huge bonanza of hydrocarbons. And that is created by fracking. So the mind will create wealth where before there was a desert of nothingness. And that is capitalism. Well, what about the other side of that equation, well, though, I mean, with the tar sands and... The tar sands are a beautiful, beautiful thing. Okay, they may be, but within this system that for practical purposes is at least somewhat... It's very, very much, you, you know... Up. Fuck me. I thought I fixed it. Um, are we good? Try it. For okay. Now. Knowing knowing that the, you know, if, if you pull those hydrocarbons out of the ground and burn them as fuel, we to deal with... On one side, I see that, yes, technological development and, and intellectual progress has made things available whether a problem or a lack of a, a, of a resource now that is no longer, but the other side of that still has to be figured in. And I okay, well, from the left or perspective, that's what it feels like is the most wait, undealt with. Uh, what, is wait, the, I, I, I just want to go back to another claim, sorry, uh, uh. Real quick, we can jump onto this real quick. Um, you claim that there's no innovation under socialism, that people who are socialists don't, like, innovate? Is that, like, a, yes. a thing you'd say regularly, fairly? Whole books have um, been written would about you agree, that. Yeah. Would you agree that uh, Einstein was an innovator? Um, like, I, besides just the theory of relativity, he also used, like, wrote the... Bible the U.S. Uh, geological Service uses to protect rivers and keep them flowing for trade and stuff. 
um, because he figured out how rivers like change their course and wrote like equations on how to figure out and 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 predict those things, and like all and like I think he like patented a new type of bicycle and all sorts of other things. Like I, I think it's fair to say that he's an innovator. Okay, fair enough. And he was a socialist, right? I would actually suggest instead of saying that he's a socialist because that's what whatever point I would actually just suggest to you and anybody read his um, his essay why socialism is that what it's called I believe so it's it's you can find a PDF anywhere just why socialism Einstein just google it um, and it's an article and it was written in 1949 by Einstein and it's it's just a good read and I I'm not gonna like use it as a gotcha I'm just saying to consider the mind of somebody who is definitely a good innovator who also came to the conclusion that socialism was good on certain fronts. Right? Well, I, He's not saying that it's good on every front, but he, he, he does make arguments about it that I think that maybe you would find persuasive coming from an expert. That, why, okay, you know, why, did, why, did, why did he leave socialist Germany? Did you mean Nazi Germany? N oh, national socialist Germany, yeah. Why did he leave the national Wait, socialist Germany? On account of the, the whole genocide thing. Yeah, so you're saying, then, that he had to flee a socialist country and come to a free country? So you're proving my yeah. point. Now, because he believed in socialism I, himself, off, he, so, off. okay, wait, so wait, he, wait, wait, so he, in Hitler's own words, he, he said that he was lying about so, being socialist to, to trap people who were interested in socialism. Socialism he he is a trap. about being a socialist. Socialism is a trap. So, no, no, no. He fled a socialist country, and he is confused and believes socialism is good, and you think that that puts me in some sort of a gotcha situation? No, it just shows no, 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 how I'm, bad no, socialism no, 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 no. is. I, I said that I'm not I'm not going to give it to you as a gotcha. I, it could I could like pretend it's a gotcha, but I just think that that would be weak. Sometime, sometime after the stream, you should read it. Is what I'm saying. It's not like an essay thing, you know. Oh, all right. Like just sometime later. Just that's 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 just all I was suggesting. And also, the, the fundamentally in Mein Kampf. Hitler says that the reason that they use the phrase national socialist is they want to convince workers who are interested in socialism to join their cause, even though they plan to murder all the socialists in the country. They are not socialists. They are liars. And that is a historical fact written in Hitler, by Hitler in his own hand, in his own words. Like, that is something that, you, that, that I will not brook quarter with. I do have Jewish ancestry. Okay. I did have family members who You're saying Hitler okay. Hitler wrote something somewhere that proves that uh, he wasn't a socialist and Hitler yet he ran his whole economy for what became the Holocaust. And, and yet he ran his whole he economy the, based on socialism. Whole economy. No, in, in your mind, is, is, is not marriage socialist. with, it's with corporate interest socialism? Is that the extent of the definition? Because that, that seems like the only way that he ran his economy oh, yeah. from socialist principles. Is that what you're saying, Cropper? Well, yeah. read read their 19-point speech where they say all the things they're going to do if they take over. They were sprouting socialism. They were that, That's what they were advocating. That's how they took over. Yes, but then what they did was Mystic like wave. give like giant con giant contracts to 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 corporations and to barons. Like the amount of of capitalists who ended up on the war crimes tribunals at Nuremberg was incredible because the amount of capitalists that were giving their support to the Nazi party because they knew it would end up with favorable deals for them because the Nazi party was lying about being socialist. That's a historical fact. No, like, socialists, from this now that that's socialists lie about being socialist and they always create an upper class. They did it in Venezuela very recently and they had it in Moscow and they've got it in Beijing. Actually, uh, funny that you should mention it. I did, I, my, my eight years in the Navy were spent doing Venezuelan anti-corruption stuff. Like, I, like, I know for a fact that the, the, the Venezuelan middle managers are, like, super-duper, like, gung-ho about being socialist. And, like, th like over the last 10 or so years, their upper management being slowly replaced and replaced and replaced have went from being gung-ho socialists, too, to being these fucking kleptocrats. And it's fucking embarrassing. And, like, I don't, I don't care about the, the fucking Vuvuzela argument. Like, Venezuela 
can't can't participate and show how good a socialist country would be because of all the fucking uh, uh, sanctions and shit against them. Uh, and oh, so please. And the argument. Uh, oh, oh, please. Yes, actually, why no, do you think we? Why do you think we put sanctions against them? Because they're utter because thieves. Because we're afraid of show. Because we're afraid of showing how good the economy of a socialist worker-controlled company country would be. Uh, no, uh, because uh, they are face. thieves. They are thieves. That is they why we don't trade with for them. The land that they took. They are uh, thieves. Their the domain is is legal today, and so if they are thieves, then so is every fucking town in the goddamn country. Right? Okay. Do you know it why? Do you know why it major? Legal, and so they're allowed to. Here's and why major. Here's why major airlines stopped flying in there because they weren't allowed to take their cash out of the country. Dog, I don't like. I, I, I said I didn't want to get trapped in the Vuvuzela argument. I don't give a shit about Venezuela. Like the where where were we, Ty? What were you saying that I interrupted you for this for? Um. Uh, oh, I guess it was on on the no socialist argument. I think that is something that, at least for the sake of clarification and just for the edification of when when I was most left. You're breaking up a lot. We can't even understand yeah. oh, you. Man. Here, I'm gonna. Shoot. Do, do, do. Yeah, this sucks. Um, okay, so let's say, um, uh, like, so when 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 Hitler rose to power and he had the social and he you know he gave basically a ton of control of like workers and whatever and like get, had the the Shit. Gestapo base. Oh, oh God! Did you, you restart? Me? Yeah, I, I did. Did you restart your recording? Oh, fuck! Is I got that... kicked. Oh, I, I got shit. kicked and lost my connection. Well, things. that's gonna suck. But we can fucking go with it. I don't care. Hold on, hold on. Let Wait. me see. Let's see something. Oh my fucking god! It'll be fine. We'll be fine. The actual conversating part is good, anyway. Um, the so wait is so your your recording still showing is going yeah yeah okay it was, it, the, the, the the just the view on the window reset and I wasn't seeing that I thought I just reset the whole fucking thing I'm sorry oh yeah okay anyways well, I guess what I was trying to set up was, was Cropper from your perspective is that a genuine you view the 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 claim of socialism and not and national socialism as synonymous with what pro socialist socialists advocate for. Because I think on the left, at least, I mean, for the most part, when I hear someone from the right say that, I assume that that's 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 a dis, that's disingenuous. That it's a I'm choosing to you know take this statement at face value, which to Andrew's point was stated in their documents not to be an actual accurate classification. Or, or I mean, and is and and to that okay. point, is Can what you're seeing as socialist within there just a marriage of state and business functions, or or, or what what is your in definition I of think that it's going to end up being on. that it's the state overreach it's, that he has this huge deal with. I'll like, use I'll use I'll, I'll use a about. metaphor. Let's say you build a jail, but, and then um, you have some people run that jail, and they turn it into a torture chamber. And now you come to me and you say, "But they didn't mean for it to be a torture chamber. The guys who built it." Well, so it always ends up that way. So I'm not really sympathetic that you say socialists don't want to destroy these places. That just means they are ignorant. They, you are simply saying to me, here's an ignorant person who doesn't know history and doesn't know philosophy and doesn't know economics. Don't you feel bad about the fact that they're so ignorant? No, I really don't give a shit. I'll shoot them in a fucking war if they try to take my freedoms. I don't care how ignorant they are. And so, and, and this, like the the left as we exist, like the 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 anarchist left, we don't want people involved in our life. Like, if I could go as a a a a, a, a gay dude and and like and 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 shop wherever I want, and maybe some shops didn't give me their business. That would, like, if I'm in a big city, it would be fine to go and take my business somewhere else, right? But if but if, you know, I go out and have fucking dinner with my spouse and sometimes people kick the shit out of me, that's fucking bullshit. And I don't care if it's like if 
like there should be protections there should be some form of recourse for that kind of violence and so uh, uh, and so where where does the line end up getting drawn for to protect them right and so coming back down to it in the end if you're in a small town and the only store in town uh, 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 what's discriminates against you then you have no recourse and so that itself is violence sure you have and recourse so, excuse me that- excuse me you do have recourse you can go to another town or you can write uh, uh something in the op-ed and the town you live in you can write How big uh, is the town you live in you can write a letter to the local newspaper. You can stand out on the, the street. You, you can stand out on the street corner and tell people who are walking in, say uh, they won't let me go in there because I'm gay. What do you think of that? You've got three different recourses right there. Plus, the, plus, there's a grocery if you're the, store. If you're in the t- kind of town where the one general, if you're in the kind of town where the one store won't sell to you because they think you're gay, regardless of if you are or not, then standing on the street corner and announcing, I am gay and this man won't serve me, is probably not your best fucking ending. A lawyer to be like, hey, hey, my civil rights is in your best interest. Um, Especially if that lawyer has put on their website that they're LGBT friendly, because that is the legal protections. And so, I'm not gay, but I want people to be able to to go and shop anywhere they worry about some well then open a gay friendly store yourself use your own money and open up a gay friendly store if you want people have a place to go shop that's safe for gays yeah but i won't have enough money to open up a gay friendly store in every single small town in the entire fucking country well then i don't think your plan has very much economic viability so what are you going to do use the state to shove it down my throat I'll bet you are. I'll bet you're going to get guys with guns to come and tell me that I have to sell stuff to gay people, aren't you? No, but it's very funny because people like you have told uh, uh, people like me uh, or have had their guys with guns tell people like me that we're not allowed to quit our jobs. Yeah. And and fucking told us to get back inside the fucking factory so many fucking times that's on page 400 of atlas shrugged the directive uh no one's allowed to quit their job uh uh, no classic misdirection and and straw manning what i am saying is that there are many times where employees do a walkout and then the cops come at the behest of, of the owner of that company and instead of him just firing all his workers because he'll lose too much money trying to find new workers instead he just has the cops come and kick the shit out of him and, and then send him back into the fucking floor to finish their shifts and come back in the next day or they'll get the shit kicked out of him again. And this happened all the fucking time and still happens all the time all over the fucking world. And, like, the whole reason the cops exist are to, to fucking help fucking get shoplifters, not to help fucking managers who do wage theft and, the fuck, and to get fucking b- people who are doing breaking and entering or to get free fucking labor for our prison factories. Like, the state is bullshit, but the state is bullshit because it is controlled by, currently controlled by people who suck. And it will continue to be bullshit even if I get in charge because I want to destroy the state. It will always be bullshit, and that's why, it's in, that's why it's in our best interest to make the state as small as possible, because it will always the, be bullshit. Parts of the state that should be, but the parts of the state that should be small are the police, are the military, because having a big military, like, what was it? The, no, the no, 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 no. If you want war, prepare for war. Those so are the, we get the, big, the the world's largest military by 10 times, we are trying to say to the whole world, we will do whatever we want. We will send our young men with good intentions to die because you can't stop us. And that those, is what we are saying when we have that big a fucking army. And when we have the biggest law enforcement and prison population, okay. in the world, we're also hey. saying the people who live inside of our borders Why have are people? bad people. Okay. And we need to fucking fill our prison factories up with them. Okay, right? well, let me yeah. answer something here. I mean, come on. On. Look, it, what if you were in control of this country at the end of World War II when we were on a two-front war against Germany and Japan, and you said, how do we prevent another two-front war in the future? We don't want our children to have to fight or our grandchildren to have to fight a war like this. And they built a military machine that kept us safe for the last 70 years, and you should be more thankful than you seem to be for that. Now, Who have they kept us safe from? The Russians that, that we built. Now, the, the fact is. Wait, 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 wait. Can you follow, follow up wait, on that? Wait, wait, wait. We never. Yeah, we never fought the Russians. The Russians have what only was ever the been Cold an ally war? in war, and then one time. 
What was Korea and Vietnam? What was we the were Cold political War? Political rivals with them. Yeah, well, the Cold Korea War. Was North and South Korea. No, North and South Korea had a civil war. South Korea, a capitalist country, was losing, and we went and backed them up and fought the North Koreans back because we had this big World War II military still. Vietnam is that the French colony of Vietnam, of Indochina, was failing, and they wanted us to come in and prop it up for them. And then we just took over it because we didn't want to let another socialist country take over, and we thought we could replicate our success in Vietnam or in Korea, in Vietnam. Well, we fought um, Russia in both those and, countries. No, we didn't. We fought fucking Asian rice farmers in both those countries. No, we fought Russia in both those countries. I, I, okay, cool. Like, you're, 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 you're saying you've been wrong so many fucking conflict points. with Russia via that, or are you saying we were yeah, yeah, yeah. US He's saying that pro I, I believe you're saying... Uh, it was yeah, a proxy you you war between the US Russians, or and... and uh, stand in for Russia. The yes. tanks, the howitzers, the rifles, the bullets, all came from Russia. Um, I mean, most of um, most of what the 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 Vietnam War was, uh, uh, it was, I mean, mostly people using recycled weapons. The fucking biggest military in the world. Um, so, like. The, the, the North Korea actually did have a lot of backing from the Soviet Union because they were strategic allies, and um, the Soviet Union had a bunch of uh, er, had way more equipment than it had manpower after World War II, uh, especially because it gave them a bulwark from South Korea, America tried to invade North Korea or Russia from there, right? But like, so I I, I would get that point of what you're saying that that it was a it was a it was a political struggle between us and them for Korea, but Vietnam I would disagree with that because, like, Russia sending aid in the form of weapons and whatever to every revolutionary struggle all over the world, including Cuba and and um, Mozambique and like fucking Colombia and just all over the fucking place. That's that was just their their standard mo, and we didn't invade Mozambique. We didn't inv we tried to invade Cuba actually, and that felt miserably. We didn't invade Colombia though, right? We 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 propped up their government to fight up to fight you know there, and plan Colombia and all that. But but we didn't actually send our troops there to die, and so that was the big difference. That was that was why we didn't have a Colombia war because we just sent them to or we just gave them guns to send their own troops to die. Yeah, I think Vietnam and Korea were anxiety after World War II of let's not let the fire get out of control. Let's just, you know, when we see the brush fire starting, let's tamp it out before it gets out of control and not let it get out of control like it did with Hitler. I think that's why we fought those wars. And I think that's also why we weren't really interested in necessarily winning them. We just wanted to stop the communists. But, like, the... This is this is like, like, eighth grade level like history because like, realistically, the the only reason that we would fight those wars is if we thought, like, this philosophical ideology of defeating communists as a sort of existential threat is real. But like historically, there hasn't been a, a like what I call communists. Like, like I would say that. Um, uh, like an anarchist, like the uh, the anarcho syndicalists of Catalonia in in revolutionary Catalonia, the EZLN in um, Chiapas, the fucking what's the third one? The uh, what are they called? The YPG right? in, in Kurdistan, Rojava. Thank you. Uh, they like like actual anarchist people. They don't start the wars. There, like any conflict they end up in is always wars of self defense. And so, like, like, yeah, sure, nationalist countries like North Korea, like Vietnam, like Russia, like China are going to be aggressive. But, like, just like with nationalist socialist Germany, it's the nationalism that's the problem. Huh. Getting rid of the state no. would solve this problem. No, socialism will always lead what? to war. You're the secret authoritarianism. Socialism will always... You're the secret authoritarianism if you think that it's socialism, the authoritarianism. Socialism leads to war. Yeah, socialism leads to these nuts too, buddy. No, no, I'm, I'm, that was rude. Socialism uh, leads, socialism leads to war, but it typically leads to being on the receiving side of it. I, I would like to hear your yes. take on, on on distinguishing between that and authoritarianism, because I I feel like that's really where we are we are the, the, our 
terminology is yeah. still differing and, the, and you're, yeah. you're kind of talking across, across each other. I mean, a lot of people will try out Orwell as this anti-communist when he, you know, fought and fought, 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 fought the fucking Franco forces and, and had a strong critique of authoritarianism. And that is, I think, especially to what Andrew has expressed in that anarchist yeah, George Orwell tradition. fought in revolutionary Catalonia. Yeah, yeah, and I'm saying, like, like in the modern anarchist left-leaning tradition, the, I think the vast majority of people's ideals are a, a, a fervent anti-authoritarianism, and and that is a, a, a strong distinction made, but it seems like I keep hearing from, from your side, you, it, those are just synonymous to you, Cropper, yes? That yeah. socialism and authoritarianism Absolutely are the same synonymous. thing, or they're just, ine- they're just in- inevitably going to intersect? They are they are synonymous. It is okay. So, hold on. What, expound so, on why they're synonymous and not just intertwined forces. Yeah, like actually, why are they literal synonyms? Socialism is simply the rule of brute force. Give me more. That's and all it is. There, okay, okay. Freedom. What about communism? Okay, listen. Freedom is a distinct system. All other systems are similar. Freedom is the only different system. It's the only dynamic system. Freedom is accomplished by making sure that a person can't be interfered with, even if other people don't like what they're doing. That is a very hectic system, and it it revolutionizes things, and it turns things over, and people don't like it. And we don't even have freedom to, to invent new automobiles in the United States because we've got a Department of Motor Vehicles that would stop us if it didn't have enough blinkers or whatever. So there are areas of our economy where we don't have freedom and they are locked down and there is no more progress in those areas. But by and large, the United States is a free country and that's why progress comes in the United States. And we have these revolutions that turn over whole industries. And where are the cashiers from 30 or 40 years ago? They're all being replaced by automatic machines. And we have, we, you wouldn't be allowed to do this in other countries. You can't have a revolution that comes just from some greedy guy who wants to make an extra buck. But in America, we can. We can revolutionize all of society with our invention. That's the thing about freedom. It's messy. Very, very messy. And there are how strip you, clubs. I like, I, how would you... Hold on, I, I have like, one more question to Cropper real quick, Andrew. How would you... Because I, I hear this... You're, you're articulating this, this system of freedom. I, it, seem, it seems limited to like a, po- a notion of positive freedom, like a positive liberty. I have the freedom to. I don't hear any accounting for any freedoms from, apart from no one interfering in my freedom to do X, Y, or Z. Is there any, and what you're uh, arguing for here, is there any sort of, of, of accounting for me being safe from the actions of others expressing their freedom? Or is the concern solely not letting the government stop me from doing anything that I have the means and capacity to do? Well, if I could write a list of 10 things, number one would be that you can say whatever you want. Number two would be that you should have a gun. So that that's my answer yep. to that. You can call the police if somebody like- breaks into your house to rob you. By all means, call the police. But don't... Uh, hesitate but that's their, but to that's their prerogative right for, you know, first you shoot them well it's your prerogative to shoot anyone that breaks into your house so first you shoot them and then but once you are it's once you are safe shoot at somebody who's shooting at me and then once you're safe you call the police right. and, and like the sheriff okay, said say, the, the sheriff said we can't do say, anything I if they run away abandoned. huh wait wait but say i think a house is abandoned and like completely run down and nobody lives there and to see if like to like survey the property maybe i'm thinking of buying it and i see somebody sh- pointing a gun at me and i pull out my gun to, sh- to shoot at them not knowing they live there because i have my right to defend myself right um and then like i'm not morally at fault for defending myself even though i didn't know somebody was living there maybe squatting maybe you know whatever and so like like what you're saying is that that this this concept of like like property or and like breaking an entity ring is this like holy like wall that that cannot be broken like th- these like concepts and like like the amount of death that we can we should want to deal to other people or like jack off in our spare time about, about doing to other people should be really low i think on our list of kind of uh, uh types of violence we want to 
the amount of trespassings that happen in the world is very low, and the amount of breaking and enterings are even lower than that, and the amount of home invasions where there's a breaking and entering while people are there is even lower than that. And it's like such an incredibly rare edge case that it, it doesn't, it, like, it bears thinking about, but not nearly as much as the common things, like where like a cop is allowed to point his gun in your face because he suspects you, drugs on you. And that is an overreach of state power, right? Like, you're not out of you're going to have your life threatened for something that isn't morally bad. A quarter of an ounce of something just an, enough for personal use, and you can get a fucking gun pointed in your face. And they don't even need to know that you have the, the fucking gu- the, the weed to have the gun pointed in your face. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, the police are the main manifestation of state overreach, and you seem to think that in, like, a libertarian, a truly free society can exist while they still exist in, the, in their current form. I don't think that that's true at all. Like... Uh, what was the question then? I mean, you went on a bit there. Which one do you want me to answer? Sorry, sorry. It, it was the the part where the the where the police are in hand of the state's power over people. Well, so too I, much reach and too much power. Yeah, I want them to have less reach and less power. A lot less. I think that uh, this is something I didn't get to say earlier. We should fund the police, the military, and a court system. That's it. Everything else should be privately taken care of or not taken care of. Whatever. Like I said, a free system is not necessarily yeah, that's, that's, a, that's pretty basic. a free system is not necessarily a wonderful system. So uh, you might like it if we all got government approved schools with little flowers out front by the door. But I'm not going to let you spend any government money on education. Not a penny. Only guns. And uh, if it's not involving guns. You know, everything, everybody else is going to have to take care of everything else. And you can't stop people. If they want to run a school, Wait, they'll run a school. Wait, I the death penalty. Um, fully if I break into your house and I kill you, do I get the death penalty? Uh, yeah. I like, I like in Texas where um, people like that regularly do not spend a day in jail. I like, like that. No, they usually spend five to ten years, but yeah. Um, for killing three for, witnesses gets you the like the one year fat fast for killing someone um, that comes into your house yeah yeah um no or, no 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 killing you've come into their house and you kill them you like five to ten years in jail or one one to two years if there were three or more witnesses i if um, i were actually really bad because it incentivizes you to kill all the witnesses that have seen them because it's actually easier to get off of that crime than um, than it is if there are witnesses. Oh, well, I'm not going to try to get in, inside the head of somebody who's trying to decide how many murders to commit. I think you're sick to think such a thing. I would put him in prison <laughs> for the rest of his life. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Um, uh, the, uh, if I were on the... To an extent, there, there is a... If, if I were on the jury... Uh, the, the, if I were on the jury that convicted him and it was beyond a reasonable doubt, I would be in favor of the death penalty. I, I'm really, really against the death penalty in most cases because it's not reversible. So I would be tempted to say only use the death penalty if people admit to the crime, but then nobody would ever admit ever, right? So you can't use that standard. So I'm okay with that, doing... Actually, like, a, a huge amount, uh, just a side note, a huge amount of confessions are actually, like, coerced from like through threats or violence by the police so they should like in the end they get thrown out in the 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 retrials and stuff okay well Um, let me keep the death penalty for confirmed cases of torture and treason sure um the um uh, i'll let go of it for murder um, i'll use life in prison why why yeah why is like like so like back when being gay was illegal would you like still be okay with the police arresting somebody for being in a gay bar no i would be like i am with heroin right now i think heroin should be legal even though it's not yeah yeah i actually believe that uh we shouldn't have like we like the amount of money that that is currently going to law enforcement for anti-drug stuff should instead be transferred like dollar for dollar over into rehabilitation programs um because like 
you know. No, it should be given back to the taxpayers. You know, have any human, I mean, it would be given to the taxpayers by, like, you know, you, you do rehabilitation programs. These people are able to re-enter the workforce and add their value to the economy, and then it, it comes back around to everyone. No, that would just like, create an industry of, of private business sucking off the government teat, saying they were reforming people, and they wouldn't actually do it. They'd just take the money. And it would be a scandal. Is there any why scenario? Wouldn't the why wouldn't they? And that's what we have. That's what we have. Apart yeah, from like, the, 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 the police, courts, and military use of government spending, like is there any blaming, example though, in sorry. society where... I, like that's victim I, blaming, though. He's saying that the private corporations sucking at the government's teat, like leeching off of it, are, the, are okay. It's the government being generous that's bad. Yeah, yeah the like, government yeah, shouldn't... That's a... The government should never be. Of course, if you offer money, somebody's going to, you know, stand up and take it. Don't be stupid. The government shouldn't be offering then why don't the money. You offer the service yourself. The the money. Why can't they? I don't care about rehab. What do I care about rehab? You if you care about it, you go open a rehab clinic. Now the funny thing is, there are no rehab clinics in North that's Korea. Like, no, that's none. A thought terminating none. Cliche. No. Wait, no rehab clinics in North Korea. None. You want to but rehab? have a really bad meth problem in North Korea, too, so, so take that with a grain of fucking salt. <laughs> and, and exactly. So where do you find rehab clinics? Not in socialist countries, not in caring countries, but in greedy, rich, capitalist countries. What? No, like the, major like the majority of places that have good rehabilitation programs are Dem Sock or Sock Dem. Like, yeah. you don't, like, you... you attempt to like mitigate or reduce harm or do rehab in like full-on free market capitalist countries uh and, and and it's and it's you know gate gated behind and being upper middle class or wealthy and in demsoc countries like they like portugal for example completely legalized they are closer to socialism they're, they're democratic socialists they legalized all drugs and stopped having law enforcement do anything to people who are suspected drug addicts except Offer to take them to clinics, right? So that they can try to to, to get free, and the, these clinics are well, subsidized or government controlled. What what and, good would it yeah, be? Like, what what good does it do to a junkie to put them into a clinic where they're just going to meet other junkies? I mean, if you if you create some except, stupid system, except for lot, American private clinics are run like like fucking junkie hostels for wealthy kids, whereas the the whereas other other their rehab clinics a lot more like like doctors. What are they called? Hospital. All right. You have one, okay. one person. Well, here's how I would solve. Talking to is medical professionals. Here's how I would solve it. I would say the government get the fuck out of it, and people pay for whatever they're willing to pay for. And I I like I would like I it's so it's so weird to hear you like say that because that's basically how it's working currently, and it's working very badly. The, the government lets opiate com companies, like, push over prescription of, you know, there's way more, like, people get okay. way more than they ever need by the time they're healthy. All and right. So there's just this huge amount just all over the place, and people are fucking dying because okay. of the free market. What, like, no, 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 that's the that, FDA. Man. Excuse me. That is not the free market. That is government licensing of medication. Excuse me, sir. That is not the free market. Jesus Christ. Uh, what is your IQ, not, buddy? Because they would have been... They, Oh my God! Are you kidding me? That's the free market. A government licensing system no, is no, the no, free no, no, market. Because they used to they used to sell they used to sell heroin over the counter until it was found out to be super addictive before the FDA existed. And so the fact yeah. that we have okay like like this system of basically trying to keep keep smaller pharma companies it, from being able to grow and compete with the big pharma companies that oh, is designed by the pharma companies so you're saying and by the state and so, so you're saying capitalism and the state that's the problem so you're saying we used to have a free economy but now the state controls it okay i think I'm we should go back to a free economy under the free economy. Can, can, I, mean, I want to ask saying that it was oh, worse under the perfectly point of free economy. Go ahead. Cropper, a minute ago, you, you had said things about, you know, the, the system of freedom will be messy and it may not be pleasant. Yeah, heroin. We're striving You'll for. be able to buy heroin at any 7-Eleven, like it or not. Awesome, awesome. One thing I haven't heard, and, and I, I hear your criticisms of the potential downfalls of authoritarianism of government. I think we disagree on, on what the inevitability of that might be. One thing I haven't heard is a, a positive argument for given the fact that it'll be messy, that it'll be difficult, that you know you won't have certain guarantees or or, or 
advantages that might be offered through a, by your definition, less free society. No, um, I don't grant that. Which part? The part where you said uh, that we would have less advantages if we didn't have chains on. I don't think the chains give you any advantages, if we can use a metaphor. But, okay, well, but, forget, so, hold on, oh, forgive me. Well, that was, that was, that was an clumsy, oh. clumsy phrasing on my part here. I, what I, I guess what I'm asking for is, what is the positive argument for this system of liberty? Is it the mere absence of what you were saying you're defining as chains? The positive or argument there, for it is that if you try to take my liberties away, I will shoot you. That, that's a that's, statement about your let, let the actions the you will take. I'm asking about this system, you know, free, calling freedom a system is, is a bit slippery. So, again, forgive any imperfections in, in my language here. I am, I'm trying to, there's something I, I, I want to hear. Is there like a, a thesis sentence that is like, here is why this system of, of the system called freedom is, will provide a better future for humanity as a whole or the people who live under it apart from negative arguments against government overreach, negative arguments against, you know, well, I, what you're referring to has changed. I don't care about humanity as a whole or the people under it. I care only about myself, and I want freedom. So why should the other 7 point whatever billion people, like, be interested in, 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 in letting that kind of worldview run amok when it's that individualistic? And I, I will that, kill them. I than I mean to. I will kill them in large numbers. All right, 10 people decide that that's a problem and kill you. Now, look, I've already got the biggest military in the world on my side. What if they're, what if they're like, that's the a, people who you, live on your block or whatever? I don't know. The problem I'm having is how do we take over this military if it disobeys us? That's the, that's the issue I'm thinking about. Oh, like, no, so, so that's like the... the like the, a collective the democratic accountability that... of government institutions is what we need? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know. Um, what I, okay. uh, um, so, no, one of the biggest problems with libertarianism is that Frederick Douglass in the 1950s, having recently, like, having been a slave and gotten his freedom and went and tried to live as a wage laborer in, in a free country, said that that chattel slavery where he was in literal chains was only a little bit worse than wage slavery where the chain were like metaphorical where the eight stranglehold ha capitalism has on you hunger thirst uh having a fucking roof over your head your need for clothing yeah fucking transportation and etc okay fucking I... ruin your life and keep you in metaphorical chains and okay so this guy who lived in literal slavery said it's like how does your system of a truly free market allow somebody who would be a wage laborer to experience freedom. All like, right. What so the fuck can he do? I heard an audio interview done in like the 1930s with a, a guy who had lived under slavery. He was one of the last living slaves who had been freed during the Civil War. And he said he would never go back to being a slave because you're nothing but a dog. He said, you ain't nothing but a dog mm -hmm. if you a slave. You nothing but a dog. And that, I believe him, because they made a meat out of troughs and stuff. So I'm all in favor of that yes. war, and I'm all in favor of a war against anybody who thinks they can behave in the manner that the slaveholders behaved. And what do I do with people who decide they want to take my freedoms? Well, what did we do to Japan and Germany? Hey, hey, uh, when, when this clip ends in the final version, could I have you insert the Russian national anthem right there? Because I think it would be a really great comedic point right there um no i'm kidding don't don't do that please <laughs> no the um and like the, the 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 biggest thing that you're talking about is like literally the reasons why so oh no ty oh god did we lose you again 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 are you there i'm back yeah Sorry. you disappeared and returned. oh no I, did we get you your me? previous audios though yeah did we get your other audios I'm back to a fresh screen. I had to refresh it. I think it's just wind in the mountains right so, now. So, so, so this is Tyler joining us. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, what, what were you on before you came back in? Um, oh, uh, so like, yeah, every single communist revolution, every single socialist revolution, whatever, that has stri striven to create a socialist structure has fought and died for that exact reason that you're talking about. They're tired of, like, fucking capitalists and lords being able to fucking, like, extort the shit out of their fucking homes getting wrecked by fucking 
tired of all excuse me a, ex, excuse me capitalists don't do that capitalists only trade with people no like look at the pinkertons look at the fuck in history of the Pinkertons, a guy founded a company, and his fucking motto was, "If your workers step out of line, I'll, I'll beat you." And he, he got the Pinkerton still a little fucking multi-million dollar fucking business, because like it's just super super useful to do bad shit to workers for you. Like, yeah, how and how did that I work out? Now, do that, dog. How did that work out? Hiring the Pink great. hiring the Pinkertons versus raising your wages because. The, play, the places that hired the Pinkertons didn't do so well, while Henry Ford doubled his wage, and he did rather well. So I, I think that... Uh, except for, like... I think that... Except for, like, all of the people who, like, the Vanderbilts hired the Pinkertons, and, like, most of the railways in the country were built by the fucking Vanderbilts, and, like, uh, fucking Andrew Carnegie hired the Vanderbilts, and fucking Standard Oil guy, J.P. Morgan, like... Yeah, the market the takes care of these guy. things. Like, the market got mad at the NFL because of the Ooh. garbage with people taking the knee for China, and so people quit watching, and Wait, people quit... Wait, manufacturing consent by Noam Chomsky? Oh, my God. Chomsky? Mr. Chump? Just manufacturing consent. I don't like the rest of the things that he has done. I don't. I think that his shit is mediocre, except for that one book where he tagged he tagged team with like a real researcher. <laughs> um, I've seen a lot of videos of it. I have the book. I'm, I'm sure I've read part of it. Yeah. It, he's garbage. It, like the, the 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 free market didn't give a shit about that. Like bonds of white supremacy against Colin Kaepernick for speaking out about the problem of white supremacy in America. Like, like if the state goes away tomorrow, like actual, like, like I want the state to go away entirely, including the cops and the military and have like civilians, like with guns handle the defense of their own community. And and you want cops who don't even necessarily have to live in these communities to come in and tell us what to do. And that seems so much more coercive and evil than anything I would suggest. Oh, I thought, you no, know, in my system, the sheriffs would be locally elected. I mean, cool, but then he chooses who to deputize, right? Yeah. And so it would be pretty easy for, let's say, the 70% of white people in a community to hire... Uh, uh, or to, to, to get a white supremacist sheriff who hires white supremacist deputies to fuck with the last 30% of people. And to me, that also isn't okay. Well, yeah, that's not okay, but in a free country, you can move. I mean, I'm not in favor of being able to harass black but, but, people but using the police. But if they're wage laborers and, and don't have the money... To okay, I know, free. cry me a fucking river. But look, there are cities in this country that are taken over by groups, and... You know, there are Mormon cities where if you're not a Mormon, your business is not going to succeed. And uh, you are just not, yeah. you're just not going to make it. I actually knew a guy who wasn't a Mormon who, and he could put on like the best Mormon impression because like, you know, you, you have to do it to get a job kind of thing. So yeah, you're definitely correct. Like, like ethnic is a huge problem in the state and and the the, the what do you, I don't think so. Violence that the uh, look hold, where hold. where is it a problem? It's America had a fucking war to fight against racism. We fought the civil war to free blacks. This this country fights and Jim fights Crow. and well, fights for we left freedom. The people who were wealthy in charge. We keep on fighting like for freedom. The people who were wealthy and did slavery. The people who were wealthy and owned the slaves were left with their wealth intact. Well, we and didn't. So they were able to continue to be senators and shit, and then just pass Jim Crow. Oh, slavery without the fucking name. Yeah. And then when that was done, they started ramping up the amount of law enforcement to put black people in prison. And because <laughs> well, black people are getting wiser and wiser about the ways that these are happening, it's happening. It's getting more and more egalitarian about who's getting punished. But we still see a predominance of black people getting punished for these non-crimes like drug possession because the profit prison industry like 
You know what the black people ought to do? The black people ought to do like a free state project where they all get together and have a really nice area that's low crime without all the problems. You should look up what happened. You should look up what happened to move Philadelphia when they got literally firebombed by the police because they were trying to do an intentional community. I know about that, and it was spreading typhoid. They had raw sewage coming out of the pipes, and it was a terrible, very dangerous situation. They could have spread who knows how many diseases from, to get firebombed from, from that center. Of, 69. And that's what you think, that, that 69 unrelated people had to get killed on top of this, in, had to get their fucking homes, which you said at the beginning of this was the most important thing. All of their property burned up by the police because an intentional community nearby was bad, as opposed to the police maybe going in and helping them fix the raw sewage and, and uh, giving no. them medicine and, the poli- and shit so the police, it's not a fucking problem. The anymore. police couldn't get anywhere near there. They would get assaulted. They, they already knew that. They couldn't get yeah, anywhere near the place. they were coming in to destroy the fucking community. I know the history of that place. I don't, you know, I think the firebombing... And, and the same thing happened at Ruby Ridge. The same thing that happened at fucking Ruby Ridge. Yeah. They didn't like that a guy was trying to fucking live on the land, and they fucking shot his fucking wife in the spine or whatever. Well, they... I think they killed his wife and shot him they, in the spine. They asked him to make a gun for them, and he wouldn't. And they were trying to frame him, and so they just went and got him. They just didn't like him. That's what I'm saying. There's no... And, and then the fucking... Like, every single time we see this, the fucking cops do an overreach. There was no good reason for... There was no crime that was being committed that required a firebomb in Move Philadelphia. And you ca- you can't disagree with that. No crime, especially no crime without a trial, the fucking firebomb to handle. Um, I, I'm on, I, I, I'm on the, the fence about that. If I were governor, I'd probably be okay at knowing the history of what had happened in that neighborhood. And then, like, like, and and I'm saying this, they're, they're like, so you you think that what happened with Move is fine, but what happened with Ruby Ridge is bad? But they're an example of the same exact thing. This this state that wants to keep this incredibly tight control on the way that people exist. And so, if you want to just home and be like a prefer type dude, you're not safe. And if you want to live in an intentional community, like like Move Africa, yeah, they sucked at it, but like, like getting attacked by the cops on multiple different occasions doesn't fucking help them out very, very much, you know? All right, well, like, my my solution to it, this huge, big, huge, overreaching state is to fund it with tariffs. No other source of taxation, only tariffs. And the, any money they can make on tariffs, fine, and that should be the only money that the federal government has. That's my opinion on that. What about, what about, um, what what's it called, uh, Ty? When, uh, cops... Take your shit. Oh, um, civil forfeiture. Civil forfeiture. Can cops do civil forfeiture still? Um, in the case of of egregious laws like um, murder, uh, anything used to commit the murder would be forfeited, and um, probably all of the possessions of the person to pay court fees and so on. Maybe not his entire fortune. Maybe just an amount to pay his court fees, and the rest could go to uh, his relatives or. Uh, children or whatever so i don't know to what extent the court has the ability to seize the property uh in order to pay their fees why wouldn't they just make their fees be very high uh uh in order to 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 get more money out of the the plaintiffs oh i'm I'm sure off in prison i'm sure they would and then in america we would have journalists that would write about it and a documentary would come out about it that's something they do do yeah. Now it is. Yeah. In America, right now. Yeah, I know and they fund nobody's police. Nobody's doing anything about it. Okay, well, we are. We're talking. You and I are talking about it. I've seen documentaries on the subject before. So it's a yeah, subject that's the out there. Charge, but the people in charge don't do anything. Okay, it. I would. Well, of course they're not. have control in this system. Yeah, they're making boondoggles of money off of it. I would private. I would uh, legalize drugs. That's how I would fix it. And so you're, what you're saying is that you want whatever government there is to have accountability to you, at least, but generally to everybody, right? You want a real democracy. Well, I want a constitutional like republic. What, 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 democracy. Why, why would you want some... D- democracy. Why would you want somebody... Killed Socrates. Sorry. You know how Socrates died, right? Democracy. By sucking shit, yeah. Oh, democracy. I misunderstood. Um... Yeah, no, like, democracy isn't, like, historically, no one's actually, like, 
attempted any th any form of democracy except for like well, the the Paris con the the uh, revolutionary Catalonia uh, easy LN like the well what what's magic tried, what's magic like, about democracy just because people vote on something what's magic about that what's magic about that is that everybody has the ability to get up and 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 explain why some sort of like action that's being taken by the group is bad for them. And so in a, in a system where there's a representative democracy or representative repu constitutional republic, whatever you say, you know, you, you know, maybe I as a Jew vote for f some fucking representative, right? And he, uh, whatever you called it, he, um, uh, he goes in front of the Congress. I think that he's got my best interest in mind because I have some very specific whatever something with regards to my profession of being a translator, I don't fucking know, right? But he goes up there.